there's a road that goes south of Rapid City, South Dakota, and it goes to a town called Hot Springs, and a lot of Indians from Pine Ridge use that road, okay? Well, back in the 1980s, um, there was this young family, and they had about five or six kids, and it was winter time. They were going into Rapid City, and they must have relatives or something there, because a lot of Pine Ridge people live in the in Rapid City. I think most of the Lakota people that live in Rapid City are from Pine Ridge and Rosebud, but mostly from Pine Ridge, because Pine Ridge is, is really close. Anyway, they were driving there, and their car hit an ice patch before they got to a bridge. And then the car slid, and it went off the bridge, and and there was a frozen uh, river there. And the car broke the ice, and, and it flipped over, and then it went into the water. And it was... Of course, the water's ice cold, and people died really quick. They drowned, yeah? And probably the coldness of the water made that happen really quick, too. And so, uh, you know, by the time they got help there, everybody died. The whole family died. And I think it was just before Christmas. It was really a sad, sad time And for that, that Teoshpe. And so, a lot of times, Indians, you know, in the summertime, they, you know, they would hitchhike through there. And they were starting to hear crying under the bridge. And it said it sounded like kids, mostly, crying. And they would go look there, the flashlight, nobody's there. Yeah, nothing there. I don't see a damn thing. So they got one of the medicine men to go over there, and he had to cleanse the area. Now, people misunderstood that. They thought, oh, they chased the spirits away. And some people thought, no, he went to talk to the spirits to tell them that they were dead because they didn't even know they were dead. That was you know, That's a usual theme. But you know what? That's not part of our culture. Yeah. See, this was a residue of the experience. Yeah, this was the a residue of the experience that was still there. And so what he had to do was when they said he cleansed the area, what he did was he re energized it using, you know, these helpers that helped him. There are things around us all the time that we can't see, but animals see them. Some of these things are what help the holy people. The holy people have no power. Medicine men have no power. It's these things that work through the holy people. They're the ones with that power. So this is what they had to use to re-energize the area. There's certain songs that go along with this that they sing, and this kind of balances the area out. Yeah, because it's like, it's also you know like say for example. When you say something, those words are there, but the energy of those words is still there too. So when it's a really traumatic experience, that increases. The power of that energy increases. That's still there. It's still there. Those souls are gone. They're on their soul journey. But the residue of the experience was still there. And so they had to balance that out. And you do that with a drum. You do that with singing certain songs. And then these spiritual helpers come. And then they rebalance it. They remove that energy so that energy is, is not charged anymore with that experience. That's what's happening. That fits in Lakota Star Knowledge, because that's how we see that. In Lakota Star Knowledge, we say that a place can have a soul, okay? What that means is that sometimes in locations, 
certain events happened that were tragic, and so it left behind the residue. So you feel something wrong. If you ride by that area with a horse, the horse picks up on it first. And it might just just buck, you know, it, or just run. For no reason, it just runs the other way. Because it picked up on that. That residue was strong. So they have to get a holy person to go over there to charge that energy there so that it's neutralized. So this way it stops. Yeah, it doesn't happen anymore. But it's it's not the souls. They're gone. They moved on. So this is residue. And that's what people mix up. So residue, it might have a sound because it's a recording. The sound got recorded. And so that's what it is. That's what my spirit guide George told me. Yeah. <laughs> My rodeo clown spirit guide from the 1800s. <laughs> Sometimes I can't even understand him because he speaks with a Texan accent. Yeah? <laughs> uh, see, everybody, all these New Agers, they all want Indian spirit guides. So me, mine is a rodeo clown. <laughs> I'm going the other direction. <laughs> anyway, so that story gives a good example of what I'm trying to explain. In that, what some of these experiences are are actually residue yeah, of that. And that residue, I really do believe, can be recorded. Yeah, I really do believe that. So. Like I said, even at these places that they say are haunted, I think there's technology that can pick up the residue. So why aren't they picking it up? Because I don't think it's real. I think it's it's a kind of, you know, people tell a story and our minds are so powerful. I I don't think you really understand how powerful our minds are. That we hear something, we will project it. Whatever we are thinking, our minds can project that based on how we are. Like, you know, a long, long time ago in Dupree, South Dakota, me and my childhood best friend, you know, there was still a movie theater in Dupree that time. The town is really small. It's not even 500 people living there. But there used to be a movie theater there when we were in high school. And so we would go, sometimes we would go and watch movies. And, you know, it's a small, dinky town. So, and, you know, so when we go see a spooky movie and then you know, we walk back, and it's no big deal because we, we both live on the same street. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just a few doors down, and there's a bunch of lights. Yeah. <laughs> And there's usually a lot of kids out, yeah, if it's summertime, so it's not nothing scary. Then we moved. <laughs> yeah, my mom we got our uh, we got our own house and because we used to stay with my grandma for many years and finally my mom got her own house. On a reservation you you, you know, there's not enough houses. You can't just say, Oh, I think I'll rent I think I'll move. You just can't do that because there's not enough houses. So uh, you have to get on a waiting list and just hope for the best. So that's what we did. And finally, one year, we got our own house, which is one on the further away from that neighborhood. So when my former best friend and I would go to these spooky movies, oh, boy, I would dread that go walking back part. Yeah, because, I, uh, you know, we would walk to a certain area. Then, oh, okay, see you tomorrow. And then he goes, you know, to his home. But there's a bunch of kids there. And where I'm headed is a long one block street, no houses, no lights. <laughs> and gravel road, yeah. <laughs> Until I get to the neighborhood where I live. So I did I start singing that right away. I wanna rock and roll all night. <laughs> 
then I start getting a little bit antsy, you know, because, you know, with gravel, you know, when you walk on a gravel road, it makes that kind of sound. And then your ears, the position of our ears, you know, we, we can hear it when it's, everything is perfectly still and you're walking on a gravel road, you can hear a tiny echo. Yeah, it's just, just a scientific fact. But your mind tells you, oh, somebody's walking behind you. Yeah, and so you say, ah, oh, no, that's, yeah, well, you know, I learned in science that, you know, I, I even say this out loud. Yeah, I learned in science that uh, when you walk on a gravel, you can hear a slight echo, and some people think that that's somebody behind them. I even say that out loud. But <laughs> I get like halfway, then I start walking faster, then <laughs> the echo is faster too, so your mind plays tricks, yeah? So you think that the, if somebody is following you, they're catching up to you. So before you know it, I'm, uh, ah, yeah, I feel like taking a jog. <laughs> Slowly my jog turns into a full blast speed ahead run, yeah? And the thing is, the echo gets faster too, yeah? So if 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 you think somebody's running behind you, when you're running, they're running too. And it just gets all freaky. Yeah? It plays with your, your thoughts. So I really had to control myself. By the time I get home, I, I just laugh. I was like, I can't believe I scared myself like that, yeah? But that's how it is. The mind is very powerful, yeah, strong. So just imagine people who don't know this information, people who don't realize that when you're walking in the gravel road and there's not no sounds around you, that you do hear an echo. This is scientific fact. But what if there's people that don't know that? Then they really think there's somebody walking behind them. Their mind works on that. Yeah? They start to work on that. And next thing you know, the mind puts all these things together according to the way you think. And next thing you know, you think you hear somebody breathing behind you. Actually, it's you. You're projecting. That's what's happening. Yeah, But see, people don't know that, so they don't realize that it's really themselves that they're projecting. They don't realize that. So they think it's actually somebody there. Next thing you know, a ghost story started. Yeah? You know, there's always explanations for things. Power of suggestion is really strong. You can brainwash an entire nation with the power of suggestion. Religion does that every Sunday. Yeah? The mind is so powerful that we underestimate what it can do. Like, for example, I know a guy on Shine River Rest, and again, for for the sake of showing respect to the family, I'm not going to say who it is. But if there is somebody from Shine River listening, most likely you know who I'm going to be talking about here. Back in the 70s, um, this guy's older than me, so probably mid seventies. This was a guy that was uh, in one of the tribal schools, and he was a star athlete, real tall guy, muscular, macho, you know, sports car, you know, really ladies' man kind of person, and you know, getting drunk every weekend and such. And, and one one day he got in a car wreck, pretty bad, he banged up his head, pretty bad. And he was in a coma for a while. And when he woke up from the coma, he was a totally different guy. Totally different personality. The mind rewired itself. It was so injured that the mind rewired itself as best as it could. Basically, it gave him a new identity. So he ended up becoming this really nice guy. Really really a sweet guy that just helps people he, he always wants to do do good things for the people and totally different totally opposite from the way he was before that accident 
See, the mind rewired it, gave him a new personality. Personality does not belong to the soul. It belongs to the body. Yeah, there's a movie about this too, I think, called Regarding Henry, I think, with a, what's his name? Han Solo guy in there. What the heck is that guy's name? Uh, you probably know who I'm talking about, but uh, Regarding Henry. And uh, I think uh, from other people tell me this, this is the same kind of thing, that this guy was a super asshole and something happened and his mind rewired itself and he's a totally different man. Yeah? That's the mind. That's how the mind is. The mind can totally do something different. You know, when you think about that and you go along that line of thought, you follow that and see where all the other things that it leads you to leads you to. One of them is that personality does not belong to the soul. The soul has no personality. It has no emotions. And memories are something different for the soul. Because when a soul is on the earth, it's developing, it's forming, according to the experiences that the body is having, that the, that person is having. The soul is developing a certain way. So the energy from all these experiences that it, it experienced that energy develops that soul. But the soul itself carries the energy of everything that ha happened to it. Memories stay with the body. So when the body's gone, that's gone too. That's how it is. Lakota Star Knowledge. So... We don't have these guardian angels because this is a dualistic concept. This is a good versus evil concept. The idea of demons, same thing. It's a dualistic concept. This violates natural law. Lakota Star Knowledge says there's at least three perspectives to everything. Not two, but at least three. So good versus evil is not seeing the fullness of reality. And when something good happens, you don't really know how good it really is. You're holding yourself back when you only see two perspectives. You're trying to paint the world in black and white. And it can't be done. This is a world, this is a universe of colors, even colors that we cannot see with our human eyes. I subscribe to Lakota Star Knowledge way of thinking. This is the way of our ancestors who lived millions of years ago. There was no ceremonies involved. There was no sacred items. There was no things that you normally find in religions. This is a simple way of living, but very effective. And the, the basic concept is to establish peace in yourself. And you go in yourself to do that. You don't find it in a book. You don't find it in a rock or a statue or a bead or a crucifix or a pipe or any ceremony. It's inside of you. That's where you have to go. That's more important. That's more important than any ceremony because what's inside of you is your existence. And that's where you need to go. Reality begins within. And this is why we have to go within ourselves. This whole idea of dark matter, it is there. But it's not a good versus evil concept either. Christian people right away probably say, Oh, it's the devil's kingdom. That's what that is. No, it's not. Negative and positive need each other to exist. And neutrality balances it all. See? Three concepts, even in the subatomic world. <laughs> That's a natural law. Think about that. 